Good morning and welcome to another episode of my Corrado conversion. As you can see, this still isn't a Corrado. It's 6 a.m. on a Saturday morning. Blue skies, birds singing. Before my children get up, I'm gonna have a go at getting the gearbox out. See if I can investigate what that noise is. Maybe even split the box. Here we go. Six speed box. O2M derivative. How hard can it be? Weather's changed slightly. Kids got up a little bit earlier than I expected. And then we had to go and play. But the gearbox has come out. I think I've sourced the noise. So I'm going to take the clutch off, have a little look on that. Play on the input shaft may be enough to cause a slight difference in the application of the, the pressure plate. I have known it to happen before. Uh, behind this cap is where the bearing sits. Light tapping hammer. get less movement if it was still in the car. Pop. There's steel, it's not plastic. And there's that bearing. As you can see, there's the input shaft. Now I'm going to attempt to measure the play in it. Having a little say clip there. Put the dial gauge at the ready. There's no steel on there. Double check. Magnetic base. Luckily. It's on a metal stand. Push it all the way in. So that's a zero. 10, 20, 30, 40. So let's see the difference. It's, as it's spinning, it's going one point five point six of a really push. Say a clip I got off last night, and I've already tapped around the casing, loosened it off. And this is the first time I've pulled this off. Oh. Yeah, it's fairly straightforward. Too obvious on the inside. No, to be fair, it looks fairly reasonable. I hate the smell of transmission fluid. Always got that very burnt smell to it. And this is the culprit. This is the one we're getting off, but let's give the gearbox a general visual check. I'm not planning to strip it down. Got no reason to, driven through every gear. Perfectly happy how it selects. Let's come over a swarf on the magnet. But the magnet is designed to co collect the swarf. Even a brand new gearbox is designed to have a little bit of wear into it. Hence putting the magnet in. Really checking to make sure all the teeth are all in good condition. Quite hard to rotate because all the weights 
on all the synchros and the selector ups. So all the gears are trying to engage just a fraction. It's quite common on forums. There's loads of videos on YouTube already about these little shims you can get just just to replace. I've bought both what both ones that are listed. Got that one. And I've got that one. Which is the one that I want. I thought for the sake of buying it, again, just bought normal bag stuff because we like to support the main dealers. And you should be able to get these from any bag group main dealers. Need a gentle tapping device. Let's just check. Will that socket go over? Yep. I'm just going to lightly tap it on. And that change of tone helps to fit that it's on. Yeah, I can fit, feel the difference straight away. That's a lot tighter bearing. Just see the magnet in there. See how much debris it's caught. There's no big chunks. Is that a big chunk? No. Which is a good sign. But there's always going to have that. Brand new gearbox gets that. That's why they put them in there. Before I glue it back together, let's clean this outer ceiling flange. I'm going to use a wire wheel. Always do it away from the transmission. Because we don't want debris going in. We want it coming out. The two halves of the transmission is clean, degreased and ready to go back together. Because there's no paper ceiling gasket we use a ceiling paste. There's lots available I always prefer to use the genuine one, which I'll leave in the description below. It just works. And again, you just have to put a very little bit on. So one of these 100 grams possibly do four gear boxes, maybe even five. Can use an other stuff, but it's designed for gear boxes. Well, that went on a bit too easy. After it's been fitted, or how you do the initial check in the car at thirty. 31, 32, the dial gauge has preloaded. There's just about, what was that? Four. So that's about 27 or 0.27 mil. In hindsight, now that bearing's quite stiff to rotate, and I think it's a little bit more. And just where I've knocked a little bit of the, the seal that's actually quite stiff There's a little bit of movement in it because it is just plastic housing in that section that keeps the ball bearings in a straight manner so having replaced it I did actually check the the movement so the way that this shaft works there's no preload on it so it's actually just floating so the bearings go round rather than being pressed against a casing 
that's going to add friction that's normally for a taper roller bearing so it's supposed to sit like that now I've dropped it right the two shims that are available so we've had the outer shim which is the one that you see on a lot of the other YouTube videos and on forums that sits underneath the sear clip that holds that in place that just packs that bit out stop that one from, from floating which is going to instead of having that movement it's going to draw that in now only on one gearbox does it lift list this larger shim so unless you've got that gearbox or you're planning to do some machine into the inside of the case do you need that so there's a good chance you don't so go down support your local main dealer just buy the outer one and the seal and you should be good to go obviously do your pre-measurements if you feel you need to I've heard somebody document that they've managed to fit two in there whether that's true or not I've only done it a couple of times so I feel I might have had two noises on the go release bearing which actually pushes down on the clutch just move those spring plates had a lot of noise on it a lot of play that would have caused some noise but also this one both running on the input shaft really so what what the noise was doing was when you release the clutch you then had a bit of a wearing noise almost like a semi grinding noise with a slight tick to it which could have been either of those a combination of the, the two bearings so I'm going with a combination of the two that's real that's really rough hopefully I'm going to start putting a little bit more technical content in of part of the conversion uh, useful little bits and pieces odd little tips and tricks so that's sort of my first one it's only because I was stripping down the gearbox to see the internals I was quite happy to re remove that bearing or remove anything I've stripped a few gearboxes sometimes you've just got to drive through them to be able to feel the different bearings and feel the different faults because it is a mechanical working component rather than something that you can physically see you can measure the synchro rings bits like that but to be fair the gearbox drove actually quite all right so the next video to this one is definitely going to be fitting the clutch because it needs a clutch I've got a clutch well, technically the clutch is actually in if you liked any of this content click subscribe hopefully there'll be some more interesting if you're into your VAG stuff after I finish this project probably be another VAG project or VAG related who knows at the moment this this is my sole focus point while the rest of the British summer is still present in the description below I'm going to leave some part numbers if you enjoyed some of this technical content click subscribe if you want to watch the next video which is going to be putting a clutch in down there thanks very much for watching I've been Crispy and this is one of my projects